Hello and welcome to this year's Adobe Max. This session is boosting video engagement and accessibility with Premiere Pro and my name is Rich Harrington. I'm really glad that you guys were able to join us today. And I hope you're having a great Adobe Max conference. In this session, you're going to learn a lot of important things about making video more accessible. We're going to take a look at both closed and open caption workflows and this is becoming increasingly important because it makes video more accessible and more discoverable. Closed captions can be useful, not just to people who are deaf, but for those who are hard of hearing, or who are new to a language, or are listening in noisy environments. Open captions are those types of captions that are always in view, and these are really becoming popular for social media. What's great here is that the new speech-to-text options in Premiere Pro make this so much easier to do. In this session, you're specifically going to learn how to accurately generate a transcript using a Premiere Pro sequence. I'll also show you how you could then turn that into captions from the transcript itself. You'll learn about making closed captions for use in web or broadcast, as well as how to create open captions that are always visible and the different formats that you might need to create if you're going to upload these captions to a video hosting site. My name is Rich Harrington. I'm a visual storyteller. I've been really exploring the fusion of where photography and video intersect for many years. Now, what I've done through the years is as I figured out things that are useful, I've written it down or recorded video courses. I've been publishing for a long time, and I've also got my own video production company called Red Pixel in the Washington, D.C. area. I regularly publish a website called Photo Focus, and I make my living as both a director and a photographer, and I design software. If you'd like to connect, feel free to look me up on LinkedIn. So why exactly does accessible video matter? Well, there's a lot of great reasons why this is really becoming popular. First up, we're seeing an increase in those who can be identified as having a challenge with hearing. This can include impairments from birth, accident, old age, and the fact that access to content on the internet keeps growing. This is really improving people's quality of life. For many, internet accessibility is critical for their ability to do their job. Now, what matters from a business point of view is that many of your customers can be blind or visually impaired, deaf or hard of hearing, have cognitive impairments, dexterity or physical challenges, could be native speakers of a different language, or could just be encountering a lot of environmental sounds that make hearing a video challenging. All right, let's explore how to accurately generate a transcript from a Premiere Pro sequence. The process is pretty straightforward. Okay, I have a simple sequence open here into Premiere Pro. First up, I'd suggest you check your settings for transcription. Here, you can make some important changes. If you'd like, you could set Premiere to automatically transcribe clips. In this case, it can do all imported clips or only clips that are in a sequence. You can also decide if you want those to be separated by speaker. This can identify if different people are speaking in a video. And that could be useful for those just following along with the text. Below this, you can also detect the language that's used. Now, if it's going to be mixed languages, you can use the auto detect here to switch between them, which could be useful if you're combining multiple speakers with different languages into one video. But you can also set a default category here, and you'll notice that there are many different options available. Now, depending upon where you're at, Premiere Pro might need to download some additional language models if you switch. I'm gonna work with English here and click OK. Now, let's switch over to the tab where the transcript information lives. You can find it here under text. Now, it's already transcribed things, and you see it's done a pretty good job. This is a short spot, a public service announcement. If you ever need to, though, you can select that clip, and you can tell it that you want to retranscribe it if needed. But in this case, we've got a pretty good transcript. This happens automatically. Now, if you didn't have that turned on under your transcription settings here, you see that you can have the automatic option turned off. I'll click OK for a second. I can also generate a static transcript if I want. 
and here we can specify the language. Yes, let's separate the speakers. And I'm going to use individual tracks, but if you had marked things using the Essential Sound Panel, you can limit it to just dialogue tracks. And let's click the button here. And you see it generates. So whether you use the automatic ones or you decide to manually do it, it's still really the same outcome. It's just whether you're doing this work up front or you do it at the very end. All right, let's take a listen. It's your car. You take it to people you trust. So that's close. I just want to make a small change. We can come in here and modify this. If you want to avoid a total rebuild, he was very much off mic when he said that. We'll rename this narrator. Here we have the mechanic. It's your car. You take it to people you trust. That's real close. It's your finances. You want to go to the experts. Cut your payments. There we have the man in the commercial. Save. Experts. Cut your payments. We've got all these credit card bills. We've got to find a way to get out from under this debt. We can help. So here it's not just one person. So let's do some splitting. Let's split the segment. Counselor here. We've got all these credit card bills. We've got to find a way to get out from under this debt. We can help. Credit.org is a nonprofit org. And let's split again. Org is a nonprofit organization that has been helping people for 60 years. Visit www.credit.org. And let's just make this a standard URL. There we go. And let's listen to the last one. That's the narrator. Credit.org is a nonprofit organization that has been helping people for 60 years. Visit www.credit.org. Great. We now have an accurate transcript. Now, the accuracy of what was done automatically by Premiere Pro can vary greatly. You notice here that the clear narrator voice and the actress were very clearly picked up, but the mechanic who was using a more jumbled, gargled voice was a little less accurate but we can easily refine these with just quick edits. It's still so much faster than doing it by hand without any assistance. Okay, let's move on to the next step. Now that we've got a transcript, let's go ahead and create captions. Now that we've got an accurate transcript, creating captions is quite simple. Now we're working with a very short piece, but even with a long piece, Premiere Pro makes this easy. Let's go here into the text panel and I see a button for create captions. I'll open it. Here we have to decide what type of captions to create. Notice that there's different options here. We can create subtitles which are going to be open captions or we can create an embedded type here that can be exported and then turned into a sidecar caption file. Now that can be used for both broadcast or for web usage. And in the future, you can also change between these. I'm gonna go with the broadcast standard here. And since it's HD, the 708. But it's really not hard to switch these in the future. If you twirl down, you'll see additional options here. These were just presets. You can actually apply visual styles, making templates using your essential graphics panel. And you can decide how long a line is, as well as the shortest duration here that a block of captions can be. And if they take up one line or two, two's more standard. And let's set the duration a little longer, 
four seconds and click create. All right, here we go. It's your car. You take it to people you trust. Now here, there's a transition in the speakers. So like before, we can split this. You take it to people you trust. So we'll go ahead in here, edit, place the cursor, and split. And you see it splits it across the two times. Now you can edit that caption. There we go. Trust. And make a small change there for accuracy. Now we're getting a little warning sign here that it's too long. So let's do a split. Now let's split this again, just so we have each speaker independent. And I'm going to label who's speaking. And we'll put that in brackets. Here we go. Cut your payments by fifty. And again, pay attention to that exclamation point there. So you keep these wrapped to a good amount of characters per line. We've got all these credit card bills. We've got to find a way to get out from under this debt. We can help. Here we go. This debt. We can help. Credit. Now here, I don't want to split this to three, so we'll do a split. We can help. Credit.org is a nonprofit organization that and let's do a split right there. There we go. All in all, pretty straightforward. That has been helping people for 60 years. Visit www.credit.org. Now you'll notice here as we look, some of these are easy to see and some not so much, but we can refine these. Let's go ahead and save our work. And now start by lassoing our titles here. What I'm going to do now is apply a style. Now we can create a style from scratch, but there's different types, pop on, roll up, etc. I'll stick with pop on to keep it nice and simple. Now this font is not going to work for the actual television sets, but it can be useful if we're going to be generating specific captions as well for open. Let's go ahead and take a look at these here. It's your fine. Now, in this case, let's step through. You take it to people you trust. And just check these. Now, the exact way that they'll display in this case is dictated by the actual controller because these aren't burned in. That's because these are true broadcast captions. Here we got a little trickiness, a phone number. So let's go ahead and shift that a little higher. Just select the caption itself and we can lift it above the phone number. So let's go with negative 100. 
And chances are we're going to have to do that with more of these captions here through the end. There we go. Just adjust these if needed. And with just a quick apply there, we're lifting them clear of laying over things. And here, a little tricky. Let's adjust that. There we go. And now it's all fitting. Let's have a look. It's your car. You take it to people you trust. It's your finances. You want to go to the experts. Cut your payments by 50. We've got all these credit card bills. We've got to find a way to get out from under this debt. We can help. Credit.org is a nonprofit organization that has been helping people for 60 years. Visit www.credit.org. There you go. Very cool. Okay, let's explore formatting a bit more. Remember, captions are on-screen text descriptions. They can be used to display dialogue, identify speakers, or describe the sound that's being heard. Captions tend to be synchronized with the video file, but when we deliver to the web, they can be either open or closed. The traditional closed captions can be turned on or off by the viewer, usually with a button or with a remote. On televisions, there tends to be a decoder device that can be used to view these, and it's built into most TV sets. Since 1993, this has really been a standard in the US at least, and has grown to become a global standard. Let's quickly do an export with this formatted for traditional web usage. I can go ahead and choose export here and evaluate my settings. I'm just gonna save this to my desktop temporarily. Down here under captions, I need to make sure this is on. Here you can decide what to create. Let's make a sidecar file initially and double check the frame rate of what we're writing. In this case, I see it's 29.97 frames per second. That's good. And we're creating the actual sidecar file. You see there's a couple different formats that Premiere can create. This W3 version is very common for time text for web, but the SRT is really a legacy format that is most widely used. So I'm gonna make that. You can also include styling if you want, although not all websites can actually recognize that. Now I'll look things over and just create the file. If we switch on over here to a finder window, you see that we have the actual SRT file there that would be used when we upload to the website. There are a lot of different formats out there. So depending upon where you're gonna use these captions, you can run into some of these options. Fortunately, Premiere Pro makes it easy to export most of them. And there are conversion utilities to convert from one format to another pretty easily. They're all just text-based with time information you'll see just different formats in use depending upon the market and the specific technology used. Okay, instead of closed captions, let's create open captions that are burned into the video and always visible. Open captions are viewable inside of the media player. Now, in order to be compliant with 508 standards, which tend to be in the United States but often affect global trends, the viewer must be able to turn the captions on and off themselves. If they can't, then it has to be always visible, hence open captions. Many people will make two different files available for download just to improve compatibility and accessibility. One with the captions burned in and one with something that can be turned on or off if the player supports it. Here's an example of an old podcast produced by the National Park Service and you'll see that they have the ability to access these with captions built in. They also separately made them available and offered them with and without.
Did you know that for the last 303 yards from the Rim Road to this overlook, you have been walking on Vernal Mesa Quartz Monzonite? This rock unit is composed of some of the most common minerals known on Earth, including feldspars and quartz. The one you choose is ultimately up to you. Open captions are always in view and cannot be turned off. They are actually embedded in the video stream itself. Unlike closed captions, open captions can take a little bit of a loss of visual quality if the video becomes heavily compressed. Closed captions exist as a separate dedicated text stream. They appear only if the media player or the device supports them. And because they're preserved as actual text, they can be searched and indexed to improve the discoverability of the file. Okay, let's say you end up also wanting to make an open caption version for export. Let me show you how. Back here in Premiere, I'm gonna select my sequence and label this open captions. And then I'm gonna also duplicate the sequence so I have a second copy and we'll call this one closed captions. There we go. So we have the one that was closed. Let's go here to the open. Notice we have our track. If we select this track here, we can go to the track settings and actually convert the type. I'm gonna switch this to the subtitle format. Again, if we had styles created in the graphics panel, we can save those, but this is good. I've got a straightforward approach here and I'll click OK. Now it's actually easier to modify these. Notice for example, I can create a background. We can adjust the opacity of that background. And if it goes beyond the edges or even has a border, that's looking pretty nice. Let's go ahead and set that. I like it and we had all the items selected. So you'll see as we drag through, we actually affect all of them. In this case, I wanna increase the font a little bit. So I'm gonna switch from the lightweight to the bold. That's pretty thick. Let's try medium. That looks better. But I can even bump the point size up a bit to make this really friendly for social media for viewing on phone devices. Let's drag through. Looks good. Still easily fits. Now in this case, we need to be mindful of where we're putting this over the phone number. So because it's a little bit bigger, we're gonna have to nudge that up. That's good. Let's select these three negative 120. Now remember, if it doesn't refresh, just click on it and check, but it looks good. Now here is a little tricky. It's really covering her face. So I'm gonna select that. And because it's for the web, I don't need to worry about it being a little bit longer, but I do need to pay attention there to the wrapping. There we go. Let's see. Now notice here, I shortened it, so I need to trim these like they were regular clips here in my timeline. Profit organization that has been helping people. And let's split that. Helping. There we go people for 60 years. And let's see. You can help. Credit.org is a nonprofit organization that has been helping people for 60 years. It's good. And helping. We can trim this ever so slightly. And we can fix this line here. Just so it's not getting so tall in the screen. Gotta find a way to get out from under this debt. We can help. Credit.org is a nonprofit organization that has been helping people. Is a nonprofit. Let's just trim these. 
and it's very easy to adjust the timing right there. Nonprofit organization that has been helping people for 60 years. Visit W. Now this one, real close, but we need to change the colors. Let's make that white text here, since it's over a dark background. And I think we're good. Let's make sure it doesn't obscure anything. I think that's actually okay. All right, let's go ahead and export that again. This time, we'll call it spot one, but with the open captions. Look it over. Instead of creating the sidecar file, I will burn the captions into the video. And if I drag through here, I really get an idea what that's going to look like. Looks good. Let's make the file. Now, if we take a look here on the desktop. It's your car. You take it to people you trust. There it is. We have the burned in video and we have the regular PSA. And you see they're both effectively the same size, but there was the separate sidecar file. Okay, now that we've got these split out, let's learn about posting them. When you go to post videos, you'll see that many sites support uploading captions directly, or you can step in and download those to edit. Let's take a look at an example. While each website will be a little bit different, they all tend to support the ability for you to load your own captions files. Here I am on YouTube, and I'll choose Upload Video, and I'll select File. What I want to do is choose the original video, the one without the captions, and click Upload. We'll let that go. Then you need to give it a little bit of information. If you scroll down here under Show More, you'll see different options that matter. For example, you'll want to specify the language used. If this had aired on broadcast before, that's fine. But we'll put the general language in there, and I can click Next. And then over here, we can start to add additional information. So I'll click Add, and I can actually upload my own file. In this case, with timing. I can then select that SRT file and choose Upload. And you see it put everything in there with all of the text, the spacing, and the formatting, which is pretty cool. Let's take a look. Not bad. So all of that came across, which is really cool. There's a little editor here as well, and you see even there at the end, I'm gonna remove this tag here. There we go. So it doesn't try to apply that formatting. But other than that, everything translated quite nicely. All right, I can click Done, and the file is all queued up, ready for the next steps. Remember, with captions, these are a benefit to so many different people. It doesn't matter if you have no ability to hear, limited ability to hear, speak a different language, are traveling in a place that's very noisy, or if you have difficulty processing the audio. There are just so many implications for captions, including just everyday social media, where the sound is often turned off by default. and these videos are more indexable. Remember, producing video can be expensive. It's much more demanding than just simple text-based content, so you want that content to be easy to find. Taking the time to make it captioned increases the discoverability of the file. Okay, a couple of more additional benefits to keep in mind. If you want to know more about captions, here's a few websites that I'd suggest checking out. Some of these are from nonprofit organizations or government websites, but they give you good background information about captioning and accessibility. Thanks so much for coming out for this session, and I hope you're having a great Adobe Max. I'd really appreciate it if you take the time to fill out the online survey. Make sure you let Adobe know if this class was useful or what other topics you'd like to see in the future. And again, my name's Rich Harrington. I hope you enjoyed learning more about accessible video. It's really important to improve the reach of your content. If you'd like to get in touch, I'm not hard to find. Feel free just to look me up on the web or you can connect on LinkedIn.
Again, thanks for checking out this class, and I hope you're having a great Adobe Max.